This video will show you how to draw Bohr diagrams, which show the numbers of protons and neutrons as well as the electron arrangements for neutral atoms of the first 20 elements of the periodic table. In 1913, Niels Bohr developed a model of the atom, in which electrons are found outside the nucleus, where they occupy shells. A shell can be visualized as a three-dimensional form of an orbit, like the outer surface of a sphere. In our model, for sake of simplicity, we'll represent shells as two-dimensional orbits. We'll use a simplified version of the periodic table, which shows only the first 20 elements. Periods are horizontal rows. Period 1 consists of hydrogen and helium. Here's period 2, from lithium to neon. Here's period 3, from sodium to argon. And potassium and calcium are the first two elements in period 4. The model we are going to use is good for the first 20 elements, but does not work well for ones past number 20. The number on the top left of each box is called the atomic number. It tells us the number of protons in an atom of an element. So a carbon atom has six protons. The number at the bottom of the box is called the atomic mass. Elements have different forms of atoms with different numbers of neutrons. These are called isotopes. Generally, if we round this number to the nearest whole number, it will give us the total number of protons plus neutrons in the most common isotope or form of the element. So the total number of protons plus neutrons in an atom of the most common isotope or form of carbon is 12. Remember, this number tells us that a carbon atom has six protons. To find the number of neutrons, we take the total number of protons and neutrons, which in this case is 12, and subtract the number of protons, which in this case is six. So 12 minus 6 gives us 6 neutrons. So we can say that an atom of the most common form of carbon has 6 protons and 6 neutrons. This tells us that argon has 18 protons. 39.9 rounds to 40. So to find the number of neutrons, we take 40 minus 18, which is equal to 22 neutrons. So the most common isotope or form of argon has 18 protons and 22 neutrons. Remember that protons are positive and electrons are negative. In a neutral atom, the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. So the atomic number on the top left also gives us the number of electrons in a neutral atom of the element. For example, the number of electrons in a neutral carbon atom is equal to six. Let's do another example. We see that phosphorus has 15 protons, 15 electrons in a neutral atom, and 31 minus 15 equals 16 neutrons in an atom of the most common form. Niels Bohr developed a simple set of rules for filling up shells with electrons. He said the first shell holds a maximum of two electrons. The second shell holds a maximum of eight electrons, and the third shell holds a maximum of eight electrons. At least, this is how we consider the third shell in the model we're using. Keep in mind that Bohr's actual model is much more complex than the simple model we're using here. However, the simple model that we're using works fine to explain the electron arrangement in the first 20 elements. Bohr also said, that a lower shell must be completely filled before electrons can be added to the next shell. For example, the first shell must be filled with two electrons before we start adding electrons to the second shell. We'll start with the simplest element, hydrogen. Its atomic number is one, which means it has one proton. The middle yellow circle represents the nucleus, so we'll write 1p here to show that there is one proton in the nucleus of a hydrogen atom. The atomic mass 1 gives the total number of protons plus neutrons. So to find the number of neutrons, we take this 1 and subtract the number of protons, which in hydrogen's case is 1. And that gives us 0 neutrons. The most common isotope or form of hydrogen has no neutrons in its nucleus. 
so we'll write 0n here in the nucleus. The atomic number 1 tells us that hydrogen has one electron in a neutral atom. We know that the first shell holds a maximum of two electrons, and a neutral hydrogen atom has one electron. So we add this electron to the first shell of hydrogen. We'll represent electrons as small yellow circles. A single electron by itself is not paired up with another electron, so it's called an unpaired electron. So this is our completed Bohr model for hydrogen. Now we'll move over to helium. Helium has an atomic number 2, which means it has two protons. So we write 2p in the nucleus. Its atomic mass is 4, so it means the total number of protons plus neutrons is equal to 4. Therefore, to find the number of neutrons, we take 4 minus 2, which is equal to 2 neutrons. So we write 2n in the nucleus. The atomic number 2 tells us that helium has two electrons in a neutral atom, and the first shell will hold a maximum of two electrons. So we add both of helium's electrons to the first shell like this, and this is the completed Bohr model for helium. Remember the first shell holds a maximum of two electrons. So in an atom of helium, the first shell is completely filled. Elements in which the highest occupied shell is completely filled are called noble gases. So helium is a noble gas. So now we've done hydrogen and helium, so we've completed the first period of the periodic table. Notice that by completing period 1, we've also completely filled the first shell. Now we'll start with the first element in period 2, lithium. Since we're starting a new period, we need to add another shell to our model. So we'll add a second circle representing the second shell. We see that lithium has three protons. So we write 3p here in the nucleus. The atomic mass rounds to seven. So the number of neutrons in the most common form of lithium is seven minus three, which equals four neutrons. So we write 4n here in the nucleus. The 3 on the top left tells us that a neutral atom of lithium has 3 electrons. The first shell holds a maximum of 2 electrons, so we'll add the first 2 electrons to the first shell like this. Because the first shell is filled with 2 electrons, the third electron will have to go into the second shell like this. So this is the Bohr model for lithium, 2 electrons in the first shell and 1 electron in the second shell. The next element is beryllium with four protons and nine minus four, which is equal to five neutrons in its most common form. Beryllium has four electrons in a neutral atom. The first shell holds only two electrons. So the first two electrons go into the first shell and after that is filled, the third and fourth electrons go into the second shell. So this is the Bohr model for beryllium. In this diagram, the two electrons in the second shell are shown as an electron pair. Another possible Bohr model for beryllium shows the two electrons in the second shell as being single. Here they are at 90 degrees or right angles to each other. In yet another possible Bohr model, the two electrons in shell 2 are shown 180 degrees from each other like this. All three possible models for beryllium can be considered as correct. Element number 5 is boron with 5 protons. 10.8 rounds off to 11, so the number of neutrons in the most common form of boron is 11 minus 5, which is equal to 6. So we write 6n in the nucleus. A neutral atom of boron has 5 electrons. The first two go into the first shell. Since these fill the first shell up, the third and fourth electrons go into the second shell. The second shell has room for eight electrons, so the fifth electron also goes into the second shell. We'll show it here on the left. This is one possible Bohr model for boron. It shows an electron pair and an unpaired electron. Another possible Bohr model for boron shows three unpaired electrons in the second shell. Both models can be considered correct. Now we'll move on to carbon with six protons. And the most common isotope or form of carbon has 12 minus 6 or 6 neutrons. A neutral atom of carbon has 6 electrons. The first two go into the first shell and the next four can go into the second shell like this. 
This is one possible Bohr model for carbon. It shows an electron pair and two unpaired electrons in the second shell. Another possible Bohr model for carbon shows all four electrons in the second shell as unpaired. This model is often used for carbon atoms when they are in molecules. Nitrogen has seven protons, and the most common form of nitrogen has 14 minus seven equals seven neutrons in the nucleus. A neutral atom of nitrogen has seven electrons, two in the first shell and five in the second shell like this. This is the Bohr model that's usually used for nitrogen. In the second shell, there is one electron pair, which is also called a lone pair, and three unpaired electrons as shown here. Now we move to oxygen with eight protons. And the most common form of oxygen has 16 minus 8 equals 8 neutrons in its nucleus. A neutral oxygen atom has 8 electrons, which are arranged like this. So this is the Bohr model for oxygen. The second shell has two lone pairs. Notice these are shown here as being at right angles to each other. The two unpaired electrons in the second shell are also at right angles to each other. This is the most useful Bohr model for oxygen. Fluorine has nine protons, and 19 minus nine equals 10 neutrons in its nucleus. Fluorine also has nine electrons in a neutral atom. They are arranged like this. So this is the Bohr model for fluorine. Its second shell has three lone pairs at right angles to each other, and one unpaired electron. Neon has 10 protons, and its most common form has 20 minus 10 equals 10 neutrons in its nucleus. Neon also has 10 electrons in a neutral atom, which are arranged like this. So this is the Bohr model for neon. Notice there are four lone pairs in level two. A set of four lone pairs is also called a stable octet. Now the Bohr model tells us that the second shell holds a maximum of eight electrons. So we see that the second shell is completely filled. Because its highest occupied shell is completely filled, neon is a noble gas. We've now come to the end of period two on the periodic table. And we've just filled up the second shell.